From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, a Ben J. Shap LLC production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome back to Analytics Week on the MarTech Podcast. This week, we're doing a deep dive into a subject that is critically important to marketers in every industry, business, and channel of marketing, analytics. So far this week, we've talked about the basic framework for analytics and best practices for data capture. So if you've missed those episodes, maybe you want to go back and check them out. But today, we're going to talk about how to maintain data cleanliness. Joining us for Analytics Week is Jen Sturgill, who's the founder of Analytics Angels, which is an analytics agency that helps businesses better extract and understand the information that drives them. Prior to founding Analytics Angels, Jen worked at Microsoft and a handful of agencies and consulting firms before branching out on her own. Jen has a wealth of information to share related to data capture, management, and reporting, and we're excited to have her as our guest. Here's the third installment of Analytics Week with Jen Sturgill from Analytics Angels. Jen, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Thanks, Ben. So we made it to the halfway point of Analytics Week, and so far we've covered a little bit about data capture and also about data storage. And today I want to focus our conversation on data cleanliness. We mentioned that there's the need for the universal source of truth where all of your data is captured, merged together, so every team in the organization can make good, solid business decisions. Again, a topic that I feel like is incredibly simple in theory and very complicated in practice. What are the rules of thumb for making sure that you're getting data from multiple sources, merging it together and keeping it clean so you can make the best possible decisions? So data cleanliness is huge because you can't really do any predictive or figure out any kind of actual targets or trends unless you do have clean data because your results will get skewed if it's not clean. For like machine learning, for instance, which is a little bit more advanced, but that is kind of impossible to get a good result unless your data is clean. So one of like the things I think is best is to work closely with IT and your analysts to just go through the data, see what's in there. And then even when you've collected it now, it's in the database, you've merged it together, you have your one source of truth, but now you actually need to go through the data and see if that all makes sense. And one way of doing this is just by sometimes charting out some visualization, seeing if it makes sense with business, if it makes sense in the industry, if those trends are making sense. And then you go back and you actually look at the raw data. And if it's not looking like what it needs to, for instance, I've seen blank rows like people have done for banner ads, for instance, there have been a view through window of 14 days, someone will click on a link, and there'll be clicks associated with that day. But then you won't actually get any visit or cost data until later in the week, because that actually has gotten credit for that particular day because the 14 day view through window of getting credit for that banner ad. So there's just certain things you need to notice like that in the data that might be a little nuanced that you need to go back and clean up. You might need to do some periodicity with the data. You use conditional logic in your programming during your data merge project. And then you also need to make sure things are the right currencies if you're looking at financial data, just to make sure everything's converting right. Are your calculated measures for your KPIs, for instance, click-through rate, correct if you have clicks and impressions and that's what you're calculating. So it's this like whole trash in, trash out. And it takes 90% of our time sometimes as analysts to actually clean up this data to make sure that we have anything useful to get any good insights from. 
I understand the trash in, trash out concept where there's a disconnect for me is when you're saying you have to look at the end result and then go back into the data and understand where something looks fishy. Is there a way that you can head off some of the problems without waiting to get the end resulting reporting and saying, yeah, this doesn't smell right? You absolutely should always be ongoing management and maintenance in each of your data lakes. Or even in your tools like web analytics, for instance, Google Analytics, if the tracking breaks on a web page because someone created a Marketo landing page without the tracking, then you're not going to get the visits information for that web page. And you're not going to know which channel those visitors came from because the tracking code is just broken. There are checks and balances you can put in place in a checklist of things that you need to do as an analyst each week or even biweekly and where the data is actually being collected in Google AdWords or actually in Facebook and how that data is being collected, that should be the first place you look. This sounds like an incredible amount of work. So assuming that you're working with a cost-sensitive organization, somebody that's not a huge enterprise, how do you manage having to go through and you know, you're setting up sanity checks to understanding where data is, but without having to go through line by line, how does this not just sink you from a time perspective? So on the front end, as with anything, you can just take some time on the front end to create some custom reports that would let you know if something was a zero, there's definitely something wrong. And you can send yourself push reports and notifications from those tools to your email inbox. Most of those tools have things like that set up so that you could just look at it real quick in a CSV and say, okay, everything looks fine. Or if you see something, okay, something's not firing. And then you can go in and look. And that could be more of a proactive thing you can do instead of being reactive. So if you're a small organization, there's different tasks you can set up for yourself to make sure that that's being covered without actually having to go in manually each day and doing it. Interesting. What are some of the most common areas where you see a lack of data cleanliness? Where is the data the dirtiest traditionally? Historical data. Most of the time when there's so many different teams utilizing the data and flowing the data in how they want or how they have historically, I see a lot of discrepancies there. And then it has effects on future data coming in because of how something is set up. I was on a project a couple projects ago where one of the client teams had data coming in with the wrong kind of ID the ID was offset. And so when they were going through this merging process, everything was offset because of that. And it was something simple in the SQL code that was just needed to be fixed. And then another issue I've seen is data just not coming in at all for certain categories because somewhere in the conditional logic, it was told not to, but really it just wasn't written correctly. So I think sometimes you need to just review all of that work and make sure that you have some kind of checks and balances in place, like monthly, you need to go in and review that. And then the historical information, a lot of it I see sometimes, which is how things are tracked. The tracking wasn't set up correctly. Like for web analytics, like Adobe products or even Google, you have to make sure that the tracking is set up correctly so the data is actually coming in right, because sometimes it can be bugged and you have to make sure that's fixed. Otherwise, it will affect things downstream and the reporting. One of the things that you mentioned that I think is interesting is that understanding your analytics is not a set it and forget it problem, that you need to check your data. You need to be constantly understanding where your data is flowing in and doing a sanity check to see if something is right. Because if it doesn't pass the smell test, it might not be business performance. If you're seeing a trend that is an anomaly very well could be a tracking problem. And that's something that you should be checking on a regular basis. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks to Jen Sturgill from Analytics Angels for joining us. If you'd like more of Jen's tips to building great reporting, we're going to publish an episode every day this week. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and check back with us tomorrow morning when we'll be discussing tools for data processing and visualization. If you can't wait until our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Jen and her business, go to Analytics. Analyticsangels.com. 
If you're a subscriber to the MarTech Podcast, thank you for being a member of our community. If you have questions, comments, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, feel free to click the link in our show notes or reach out to us on Twitter or on LinkedIn. My company handle is Ben J. Shap LLC, and my personal handle is Ben J. Shap. That's B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. If you haven't subscribed yet and you want a weekly stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, in addition to the rest of Analytics Week, we've got some great episodes lined up for the next few weeks. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. Okay, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.